Gabriel here. Today I am going to teach you how to find a research article and how to summarize it so that you can learn how to find and use research articles to help you with your research projects coming up soon. Now what is a research article, you may ask? It is something that is original and it will benefit other groups, contribute to their base of knowledge that they already have and that's been peer-reviewed by other experts in their field. Okay, so we've established a definition of a research article, but what are the things that come with it being a research article? Well, it has to include things that are pretty familiar because you have used them in a number of science labs in many of your classes. How do we know it's not a research article? If it's a news article, or book review, or um, some type of review article where it just summarizes research, or encyclopedia article, case study. Those are not real research articles for what we need to do for getting you ready to conduct research. So how does a researcher actually get published for you to read the research article? Well, it has to be new and original, unique, it could test the same hypothesis that somebody else tested, but use different methods in order to test it. And it's something that's almost always going to have the same format as what you've seen in like research posters. Now for your assignments for me, you're going to have to look at articles and provide me extensive marginalia and an article summary. I'm going to show you an example of what extensive marginalia looks like. So I chose an article in something that we are conducting in class usually, and this article was taken from somewhere. I'm going to show you how we find that out. Remember, this is an example of marginalia, and I'm showing you the level of what we expect from you when you hand something like this in. So just as I told you the breakdown of an article, we have the abstract first, and the abstract summarizes everything I want to know to tell me, do I want to read any more of this article? Am I going to get out of it what I think this tells me I'm going to? So I'm going to say yes with this. And you notice I have extensive highlights, underlines, and notes in the margins. And the notes in the margins can be questions, like, I don't know what this definition is, what is supine, and that's something you can talk to me about later when you're conducting your research. You, um, I use shorthand, such as a down arrow for the word decrease. So grip strength decreases when supine. I write arrows for notes that I write in my own words. And then I found out information about the article as I looked at it, and I wrote it out and practiced my APA reference citation. So I'll show you where I found all this in a minute. But as you notice, I changed my highlight colors. I underlined first when I looked at the article, and then I came back and I highlighted. And my highlights are based on groupings. So I got different things out of different colors. Now I'm just going to scan through the whole article so you can kind of see what something should look like when you hand it into me for grading. So again, I start talking about the methods in my own words all over the margins. I break up my notes in the margins by putting boxes around them. If my article goes all the way to the margins, then I recommend that you put it smaller on a Word page or um, PDF page and then print it smaller when you write on it. If you can't write on it, you do have my permission to use software where you can edit and put the highlights and notes on it on your own. But I should be able to see what you're thinking, what you're learning, what you found out, and get an idea on how I can talk with you about this article on applying it to your research. Okay, notice that I changed to pink because now I'm really looking at a new section. So we have the instruments, which is materials, right? Methods, subjects, instrument, procedure, all the things that I talked about, but the verbiage, you know, verbiage means the same thing. Their statistical analysis. The results of their statistical test is in here as well. And what the meaning of their statistical test is. So this is what they found out. 
and then what it all means. And then I practiced writing it in my own words because you can't copy it word for word. That is plagiarism. And then here's their reference list. Now this is important because let's say you like this article, but it just didn't give you something or you want more of what it gave you. It's exactly what you're looking for. Always look at where did they get information to help them with their research. These are great follow up articles for you. You're going to have to find eight articles and evaluate those articles, critique them and tell me more about them and how they apply to the project that you want to do. In SRT4, you have to do eight articles. So this is a great place to find your articles. Now, if you notice at the bottom of this one, it says that it was published in the American Journal of Occupational Therapy. I get page numbers for that journal. And the title and the authors is all the way at the top here. And it always gives me some keywords above or below the abstract if it's a good article. So I wrote the author's names first, the date that the article was published, the title of the article. Notice that I don't have things in capital letters. Then I italicize the journal title with the volume and the issue number followed by the pages. Now with APA volume um, or edition seven, we are now going to add the DOI after that. Okay, so if you're doing marginalia from home or in school with me in the research class, here are some ways that you can do marginalia and it all kind of depends on what you have access to. So one of the easiest ways, it's actually the one I prefer, is that you print out the article and then you can write all over it. You can use different kinds of symbols. You can highlight, you can underline, you can write squiggly lines, you can do the arrows, you can write boxes around things. You can print, highlight, and then write in the margins. Another way is to download the article and then overlay it in like a Word document where you're gonna have to make it smaller each page will have to be a little smaller because you'll need room in the margins. And then use the draw tools in Word. Or you could upload the article to, if you have an iPhone, you could use like Evernote and some of those other apps, advanced Photoshop apps, um, or there's many of them that you can do this in. But the most important thing is that you know that I have to be able to see everything you highlight and I have to be able to read your notes and know which notes belong to which underlines and highlights. I'm going to show you a couple examples from previous students and what they handed in to me that were all acceptable article marginalia submissions. So this student did the one where he printed it out, he underlined, then he did highlights, he had a code for his highlights that's excellent, and then he wrote notes that were either questions or that were definitions where he was reminding me, okay, this is what I'm getting out of this section. So this was one of his first article summaries for me. And then his next article summary, he got a little fancier. And this time he used software that allowed him to do the highlights in here and comments showed up on the side. What I cannot accept is if you have a hidden comment in here, I will not be able to read that and I'm not clicking on all kinds of individual comments that'll take me five years to read them. So he made it so that the comments did show up in the margins when he inserted this or when he submitted it to me. And then he did the same thing again in this article and then he started getting a little fancy and he went back to the color coding, but he did the color coding digitally and then he actually ended up doing the color coding and going back to doing it by hand. It doesn't matter to me how you do it. What it matters is that it's extensive work. Every time you do an article and finish your marginalia, you have to complete a summary showing me that you took away some information from the article that might help you with your research. This is the format of the document you're going to hand in. So you have to practice writing your article reference in APA format. I'll go over that in a minute. You get one third of your points just by doing extensive marginalia and highlights that I've just shown you. Other things that you need to do, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little better. Other things that you need to do are summarize a purpose of the study 
understand the methods and the materials only in a few concise sentences. I don't want you copying anything word for word. You have to practice discussing somebody else's article in your own words. Your results, so that includes the statistical test. It could be a pair T test. It could be an ANOVA. It could be linear regression. It could be something even fancier. It could be something simpler. It could be multiple statistical tests. Make sure that you take your time to write what you learn from their tests. And you have to tell me what they found out. Did they actually support their hypothesis? Or did they come up with some new findings? Then you have to apply it to your research and other studies. And then you can self-grade and you can see how you did with this. So remember, one of the first things I'm going to give you after you've done your marginalia is the setup for your summary for your article. And the first thing you have to do in your summary is report the article in reference or bibliographic form or format, and it has to be APA. So this will be the first thing you see, and I give you an example with three authors, exactly how it should be set up. In addition to that, I gave you an incredibly important link. This is the link to the Purdue site, and it's Purdue University, and the link for the page is alpurdue.edu, which will be on the link. And when you get there, you're going to have to possibly find, they keep updating the site because they just moved to APA 7. So you're going to have to find your way around in this site so that you look at the seventh edition information on how you format. So I'm in the reference list for a number of authors, and I'm going to change that to general format. So general format is what I've already given you. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that's on the paper. Oh, this let me think, go away. So uh, I'm going to go to articles in a periodical. So you have to read a research article. This is what I gave you. Now you have to add the DOI, which is where you found the article. And we can always put a DOI in our browser and it'll bring us to this article. Even if it's something you found in a magazine, you can pretty much find it somewhere online. So for an article, it gives you all the different examples on how you would set it up. So just so you know, an AP reference, APA reference, and an in-text citation is different. An APA reference is going to be in a reference section of a paper or in a bibliography, and these are different by the way, and an in-text citation is going to be like in the middle of the paragraphs or in the figure description. So make sure you pay attention to that seventh edition on Al Purdue of APA style and format. And don't count on the accuracy of those APA generators, MLA generators, because often they give you the wrong information. Okay, so let's do a little practice real quick. What I've shown you here is this right here is the correct format that I just showed you in um, the page that I'm going to give you for your summary. This is the correct format for a reference. Now here is an example of a reference that has three things wrong. What are the three things wrong? Oh, and this little space should not have been here. I don't know why it's there. Oh, it's because I stretched it. What are the three things wrong with this? Pause, because I'm about to tell you what the three things wrong are. And then when you're ready, go ahead and play. So follow through. We have the missing and the ampersand. There are two authors and up to many more authors. You can put that on the last one. And moving through this, they did all capitalization which if you notice title of article up in the correct way, we do not capitalize every single word unless of course it's a proper noun. And they italicize the issue number. The issue number actually should not be italicized. Yes, we pay attention to that many details. They also, oops, they also don't have the DOI in here. Okay, let's look at the next one. So remember I gave you an example of how it should look. Now here's one with three things wrong. Go ahead and pause. I'm about to go over the real answer. They put the month, which I think is an MLA thing, but it is not APA. They did not italicize. 
the title of the periodical, which is the journal. And they put papa for pages, and you don't do that. And they're missing the DOI. Okay, so there you have it. APA is very important to us. We expect that you follow it very carefully and you pay attention to all those little details. Remember, this is the resource that we use and we expect you to use the same one. And all the information on in-text citation basics, remember in-text is in the paragraphs and examples for that. And this is an example on what you will be doing for your proposal, your research proposals for me. You put the author's names followed by a comma and a date of the article publication and then all the basic rules and anything about the number of authors and where you found the periodical are all in here. So after this student did her article marginalia, she completed the APA format for the reference. She put the questions in and the number of points for summarizing, which aren't questions, they're really prompts. She puts the information in here that she took right from her marginalia. So she just looked at her marginalia to get it. And then she shared with me what she thought were the most useful diagrams. And why she shares that with me is because we're trying to take we're trying to get ideas from what other researchers have done and learn from how they statistically analyze their data because we might end up using similar methods. And sometimes you don't know what methods you can use without looking what other people have done. And she discussed the results in here with the stats that she could understand, and it's fine if you don't understand it all, and completed the rest of the summary exercise and submitted this to me as is. So by now you should be going, okay, I know what I need to do when I get an article. Now how do I get these articles? I'm going to show you a couple ways and you're going to have to keep asking me for help if you need it. For example, if you can't get access to one, maybe there's other ways that we can get it. Keep in mind that many published articles cost $30 to $40, so we have a lot of resources and a lot of people that we can ask to help us with something like that. One of the first places I recommend that you go looking is Google Scholar, and I'll show you that in a minute. Another place if Google Scholar just keeps getting you to dead ends is go to Science Direct and make sure that you filter your search for open source articles and Elsevier and make sure you filter for open source. These are ones that you don't have to pay for if they're open source. And last but not least, find the actual journal of interest. There are journals that specifically work in, you know, like there might be a journal out there on drone technology if you want to do a drone project. There might be a journal out there on just feet if you want, and there actually is one, it's called the journal for, or it's the foot and ankle journal. And you can look up articles just in that journal and you can find something in every realm and probably more than you know what to do with. Just go to the website for that journal, go into the journal, and then filter your search for the free access articles. So the way you get into Google Scholar is you just type into Google Scholar, and then you're going to get to this website. You're going to go into the window. You're going to type in what you're looking for by some keywords. So I recommend, since I just had you perform something outside during our COVID stay at home, we did something with jump height. So if you're looking for an article on jump height, let's say you want to know how to increase jump height, or let's say you want to know how to make a more accurate jump, or you want to do the longest jump, or you want to find out the relationships between jump height and something else. Look, they have lots and lots of key topics that other people have put in for their keywords for jump height. So I'm just going to go with this one, hit return, and this is what pops up. Now I told you about Elsevier. Elsevier just stores many, 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 many journals. It is not an actual name of a journal article. And the Journal of Sports Science, if you see where I'm highlighting, I'm going to zoom in. Journal of Sports Science 2007 published this article. The Journal of Strength and Conditioning, and I just know that because I know that, published in 2008, published this article. So you might see these are the top hits, which means they're still being used a lot. 
cited by many, many other researchers, you might say, I only wanna look at stuff since 2016. Well, then something new shows up. So you can choose your article from here. And usually when you go in, so I'm gonna go into my top hit because I'm just going to pretend that's the one I'm most interested in, which brings me the, to the journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. This is the actual name of the journal. And notice, yes, I got it, you use cookies. The abstract tells me what the journal is all about. This is where I decide, is this something I can hang with? Is this something that might help me if I read it? Yes, but I can't get the full article. And that's where, if you can't, you get that DOI and you look at some of the other resources on how we can, um, some of our other things that we have through our library where we can get access to those articles. So when you start looking for an article, really pay attention. What is the journal? What is the date? Of course, you can sort it by date if you want to. And then start just reading. What are some other keywords I can get from looking at the titles of some of these articles? Are any of these something that I never even thought of that might be interesting? So as I go through here, I find one that actually looks like, oh, arm swing on counter movement, vertical jump performance, which is something similar to the experiment I had you guys work on the past few weeks, except this is in volleyball players. It doesn't really matter that we're not looking at volleyball players because this information right here might be very useful for us. So then I click on the article and I read the abstract and I determine is this something that I really might be interested in. I read it and I think, oh, why yes it is. So you guys are going to get a copy of this article and you decide how you want to do your marginalia. And I think you're going to notice that some of the statistics that I've done with you in the past few weeks and some of the activity that I had you work on the past few weeks is going to be re really relevant to what you see in this article. So this week's assignment is that you are going to do your first research article, marginalia and summary, and hand it in to me for the next time we have to hand things in. I hope this helped you understand more about research and research articles. Bye.